Good morning everybody, it's Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quotes For You. Hope you're having a lovely day. Um, I'm doing a small tutorial today and I might be um, cutting this tutorial into a few parts because I don't want it to go on too long. Um, I have made uh, cathedral windows, mock cathedral windows projects before. Um, I had made this little quilt recently quilt, runner, tabletop, or whatever it is. My husband actually took it, I had to take it back from him. Back from him. Um, I made this with all sorts of different fabrics, okay? If you look up a cathedral windows quilt pattern, if you're new and don't know what that is, there's a traditional way of making what is called a cathedral windows quilt. And it's a, it's a decent sized piece of fabric that you sort of origami, you sort of fold in a different way, and then you insert this little piece of fabric and it's sort of self batted. The backing is the, the backing is finished by the time you're finished with it hand stitching it. That is the traditional method of making a cathedral windows quilt. Um, this is a mock cathedral windows quilt and usually a cathedral windows quilt pattern is a little bit more um, predictable in that what I'm calling is the, the frame is perhaps just one color and I had made a quilt full-size quilt uh, two and a half three years ago that actually hung in a quilt show um, Now, as you can see, this more traditional looking cathedral windows has a white frame, as I'm calling it. There's no curved piecing on the sewing machine. This is folded over. This little oval frame here is folded over. So as you can see, this is more of a traditional look and this is more of a multicolored look here, what I've done. I had chosen a white fabric for my frame, whereas in this I chose all sorts of different ones. This pillow was using four inch squares. This little quilt is using five inch squares, the whole thing, obviously except the border. So that is the difference. You could make a cathedral windows, this method that I'm going to be showing you, you could make it in three inch squares. Oh my goodness be tiny, well you could do it, you could make it in six inch squares. One of the last videos I made, I made one this big with 10 inch squares. Then I made a small pin cushion with a little tiny two and a half inch, or no, three inch. One 
one little square. It's a very versatile block. However, it takes a lot of fabric. I was saying that my cathedral windows quilt that I had made that looks like this with the polka dots here and then scrap in here and the white frame, that took a total uh, with the backing, that took a total of about 45, fab 45 yards of fabric. <laughs> yeah, 45 yards. It's not hard, but it does take a lot of fabric. But this way, this one that I'm showing you how to do, is if you have a ton of scraps. Now, I'm not talking this big a scrap. I'm not talking this big a scrap. I'm talking about if you had some fabric that you could cut either into four inch squares five inch squares okay or if you have several several or um, quite a few charm packs that you don't know what to do this is the look that you're going to get now i was thinking about when i was going to be doing this tutorial on this multicolored, a little bit more um out there cathedral windows quilt as opposed to the more traditional looking with the, with the same color frame, I was thinking that this frame, this curved frame piece here, that actually starts out with a five inch square. This is five inch squares. And it starts out with a five inch square. So what I'm saying is you only, and you only use a little bit of fabric to turn on the bias to get this seam here. The rest of the fabric is wasted. And I was thinking before I did this, I'm not bothered by that waste. However, I know a lot of people use the minuscule scraps. I was trying to think, how could I show you people how to make this rolled frame here without that all that ends up showing is about half an inch of rolled textural, it's sort of, it's sort of um, floppy, the construction method, the way I've done it, I have not stitched down that out the um, outer edge, um, how to make it without using an entire five inch square. And I think you're going, oh, how do you do that? I don't know, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> because I thought, well, let me just see if I could cut this, it has to be on the bias. So when you get a charm square, that's not on the bias and this is on the bias so i thought well i could just i could just cut a strip out and then i'm thinking well i still have waste i still have waste on either side right because what you do is you fold it in half and then you roll it over and i'm thinking i couldn't figure it out so what i'm saying is if you have five inch squares or four inch squares there is a bit of waste using this method and also i cut out a big lump of seam again I'll show you probably in the next video of this of, of this here and so you're cutting out that bit of waste but if you're not bothered about that this is the look you're going to get this is the look now I'm not quite sure I had done a, a tutorial and I was I was telling you the last one I was I didn't do a tutorial when I was showing you um was this I forget how to do it. one two three four five five across and six down or six across and seven down. I'm not quite sure. Um, I believe this was six. Uh, uh, this is four inch squares. I believe this is six across and six down. The, the units that we're going to be making. Again, quite a lot of fabric. And I have at my disposal quite a lot of um, charm squares that I bought over the years. Um, these, this was only $4. This was only $4 at a place I got that. They were on sale. That's awesome. But again, if you have fabric that you have scraps and you want to um, you want to uh, cut your four inch or five inch squares and as I said this this one I'm going to be using I'm going to be using my five inch squares I have uh, quite a few quite a few five inch squares now when you're when you're choosing your fabric by all means for the frame for the for the frame you could just use a, a solid if you have even a, a muslin, you can save and use a, a solid white muslin or if you have black, but you're going to be needing quite a few of these, uh, whatever size you want it to make. Again, this is four inch, these are five inch squares. The whole thing, 
Everything I've done is five inch squares. The oval is a, on this one, a four inch square here, a four inch square here, and a four inch square for there. This one here is a five inch oval here, a five inch square here, and a five inch frame. Now, you, when you're choosing your fabrics, as you can see on this one, this I think is very important, the fabrics here, the dark green, the blue, the orange, the lime green, the orange, the blue, and then around here, which are cut in half, that's the fabric you're going to see. Do you get that? So when we construct this, and it's a funky method, if you, if you, again, I did a whole tutorial on it, but I'll do it again, because I'm, I'm trying to show you that however big you want to make this, or however, uh, however small, once you put your rows together, that's going to be the size it is. You can't necessarily, oh, I want to make that bigger, because when you start cutting your fabrics here, you can't add on to it. So I'll show you, maybe then we can figure out oh, mathematically, I doubt that, you guys can figure out mathematically how large, if you wanted to make an entire quilt. Um, I would just say this, that my, my quilt um, that I had made, that took, as I was saying, about 45 yards of fabric total. This method, you need a backing fabric. The traditional cathedral windows method, you don't. It, it backs itself. So once you're done all that tedious hand stitching, which quite a lot of people like to do, they hand stitch these, these um, curved frames down. Um, the whole entire thing is sort of self quilted and self batted in its finish. This method, we need a backing. So with my large quilt that I made that was, I had hanging in a quilt show, um, that quilt took about 45 yards of fabric, including the batting, and then of course the backing, oh, including the backing, I should say, and then the batting. So what I have here is I'm, go, I'm, I'm just going to be pulling willy-nilly from my uh, charm square packs here that I have, that I've been collecting over the years. And that's the whole point of it, to, create what you want to start doing is to start a pile of what you deem the frame fabric this rolled fabric which on this one is the white if you want to use a solid that's fine you cut your squares nice pile of them and then your oval fabric here that turns out an oval it starts out a five inch square or whatever size square you want to determine that and, I, and then also the most important thing is what you want to determine is that your, is your focal point of fabric here. That's where, that we're just going to be using one piece, one square, one either charm square, one four inch square, whatever size you have. And then I'll, I'm gonna be showing you how we're going to um, arrange those fabrics, those three sort of piles of fabric that you have um, to get this look, this is a multicolored look. As I said, done a tutorial on that one, same exact construction method, but right now I'm going to be pulling a ton of scraps, a ton of five inch squares for me, and making a very, very bold and multicolored little table, table runner. And again, the size depends on how many squares you want. And as we go along, I'll determine eh, what size do I want this to be and again pay attention to that it might be in the next video uh, or, or this video I'll see of exactly how many squares across and then we start putting our focal fabric in to determine the size so I'll get to that all right I'm gonna put my camera down now what I have done here from from actually, for me, just a, a, a couple of different charm packs. They, they're not all matching whatsoever, but I like the look of this. I have pulled 24. I've figured out that it, this is about the size of this little runner here, okay? I believe this was six by four here. And that's, so I'm gonna make a little another little uh, topper here, this little quilt, this size, again, with the, uh, not, excluding the border, so I had used 24 five inch squares, okay? I'd put them in a fairly pleasing way that I, I like, okay? I, if, if you um, don't have another table and you get it mixed up, that's the beauty of this quilt here. 
because it's just a, except for your um, five inch squares that are really prominent, you're, you're only going to be seeing a little bit of this oval and a little bit of the frame. Now, this, these 24 squares, what are we going to be seeing when it's done? The 24 squares are the, what I am I'm ending up calling an oval. This oval here, this oval here is this, are these squares, okay? This oval here are the basics of this squares here, these 24. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 24 of these ovals, okay? Now, for my, for my, for this quilt here, for my frame fabrics, for my frame fabrics here. I'm going, I chose this charm pack that I have, which are, uh, these are Kona cotton solids. These are all solids. Now the reason I've changed, uh, uh, reason I've changed it up, I was looking at this, I had used more solid batiks here for my, for my base. And then I had used a, a, a patterned random, I pulled, random charm squares of pattern okay so this I'm, I'm flipping it up I'm changing it up I should say the the ovals here are going to be patterned and my frames are going to be multicolor of my solid fabrics okay you got that okay and then at the end of the day I'm not quite sure what oops these are these are more solids I'm not quite sure of what, uh, let me just see, maybe I'm going to be pulling another charm pack that has um, all my five inch squares, but then you'll see that my five inch squares here, these are another, my five inch squares are going to end up this one here, okay? And I'll be probably doing more of a, a, a multicolored, uh, just scrappy look also. So I'll have, I'll have sort of patterned, solid, and then another pattern. We have 24 to make this small size quilt. For me, patterned fabrics that all go together nicely. And again, don't overthink this because just a small amount's going to be showing. But I have and these for, Kona for one square. For one square, you're going to be needing two solids or two frames, okay? This is our frame fabric here. Okay, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this over to my ironing board. I'll start over down here. And I'm going to iron these really well in half. We're going to be covering our base fabric. We're going to iron these in half, whichever ones you choose to be your frame. We're going to be ironing them half on the diagonal and each block will end up looking like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to my ironing board. I'm going to iron 48 of my solid fabrics in half on the diagonal. So I've taken these off of my ironing board and as you can see I have one, two, three, four rows and in them are six units across and the four rows down. 